In this video, I'm going to cover a topic you'll find in the College Mathematics CLEP exam called Probability. I'll first go through a couple of definitions of various topics in it, and then go over some example problems. So what is probability? The probability of an event happening is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. So for example, I have a bag that contains three green marbles, four blue marbles, and five red ones. One is chosen at random. What is the probability that it is red? All right, so our favorable outcomes are red marbles. And that's gonna be five. So our total number of possible outcomes include the three green ones, the, the four blue ones, and the five red ones, for a total of 12. So your probability of getting a red marble is 5 out of 12, because 5 are red out of the possible 12. So when you see P of A in this first one, that signifies the probability of event A. So the probability of event A. So whatever event A is might be, you know, rolling a certain number on a dice or pulling a card out of a, you know, deck of cards. So any kind of event like that. Now the second one here, this is the complement. When you see that tick mark is a complement. The probability of its complement is equal to one minus the probability of event A. So if I said the probability of it will rain today is 0.4 or you know 40 percent its complement would be probably that it will not rain and that would be 1 minus 0 0.4 which gives you 0 0.6 so we get a 40 percent chance of rain you have a 60 percent chance that it won't rain so that's its complement. So you might encounter a number with an exclamation point behind it. That means it's a factorial five factorial. And what you simply do there is take the number that starts with five and multiply it by all the numbers below it down to one. So five times four times three times two times one. So five factorial is equal to 120. So now we have the addition rule of probability. So this states the probability of A or B, remember A and B are just different two events, the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So the probability of A and B is the probability that they both happen at the same time. So the example we have here, the probability that a can is dent is 0 0.05, and the probability that the wrapper is torn is 0 0.03. The probability of a can is dent and the label is torn is 0 0.007. What is the probability that the can is dent or torn? So using our probability, we have our event A, which is the can being dent. Event B, which would be that the wrapper is torn. So we have the probability of it being dent is 0 0.05. That it's torn be 0 0.03. And then that is both. That is torn and dent. It's going to be minus point or 0 0.007. That will equal 0 0.073. So remember when they ask for something where it's probability of doing one event or another, it's the probability of that first event plus the probability of that second event minus the probability that both events happen at the same time. Now the multiplication rule, we're going to use AND, that's going to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So for example, so for a particular football game, the probability of scoring more than three touchdowns is 0 0.3, and the probability of rushing more than 100 yards is 0 
was the probability of scoring more than three touchdowns and rushing for more than 100 yards. So we have our two events, probability of scoring more than three touchdowns and the probability of rushing more than 100 yards. So we basically just take these two events and multiply them together. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.2. So two events, you just multiply their probabilities together. So that's going to give you probability of 0 0.06. So remember when you encounter the multiplication rule, multiply the probabilities of each event together. If you had three events, the probability of A, B, and C, simply multiply all three probabilities together. Probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. So this goes on for how many other events you have going on at the same time. Just multiply all the probabilities together. Now let's talk about independent events. So events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event. So we have probability of A and the probability of B. Is that going to be the same as probability of A times the probability of B given that A has already occurred? So for example, tossing a coin and then selecting a card from a deck of cards. So tossing a coin will not affect the probability of selecting any card from the deck. Now, if I was, you know, using selecting two cards from a deck and without replacement, then removing one card would affect the probability of the second card because there's one less card to choose from. But in this case, tossing a coin and selecting a card are independent events. So, what are dependent events? So, the probability of an event changes because of the occurrence of another event. So this means that probability of A times probability of B does not equal the probability of A times the probability of B given that event A already occurred. So for our example, you know, selecting a card from a deck of cards without replacement and then selecting another. So if I select one card, let's say it's the King of Hearts, so when I go to select the second card, there's only 51 cards left in the deck. So that's going to change the probability of the next card that I'm going to select. All right, mutually exclusive. So it, these are events where they cannot occur at the same time. So, so for example, selecting a card from deck of cards that is red and a spade. There's no way I can select one card that would satisfy both of those criteria, being red and a spade. So remember, a spade is a black card. So the probability of A or B would equal, you know, probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Since this case is mutually exclusive, that really just reduces down to the probability of A or B is equal to just the probability of A plus the probability of B, because our probability of A and B would equal zero when they're mutually exclusive. All right, sometimes you'll see the word given. So what does given mean? So, so given means that some event already occurred. So we look back at the deck of cards. If I already selected one card out of the deck, there's going to be one less card to choose from on my second try. So here it says, you know, if the probability of someone with a college degree and earning over 100K is 0.15, and the probability of having a college degree is 0.4, what's the probability that someone earns 100K or more given they have a college degree? So we use this formula, probably a B given A is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. So in this case, we get 0 0.15 for having both, and then 0 0.4 for having a college degree. So that gives us 0 0.375. So the probability that someone earns 100K or more, given that they have a college degree, is 0 0.375. So that's how you would calculate that. Also, when you see given, if you're given a table of data, given means just to look at that one, you know, subset of the data. So this says, what is the probability that someone prefers a black car given that they are female? So in this case, we're only going to look at the row that has female. Okay, so we're going to look at that subset of data. Out of them, how many prefer a black car? So we said 15 out of the total, 25. 
And again, we want to reduce this as far as we can, so we can divide both by 5. It goes 3 over 5. Okay, so this is the probability of 3 out of 5. So it's the probability that someone prefers a black car given that they are female. But if it asks the probability that somebody prefers a black car, you know, without the subset, it would have been a 23 out of 53. That's simply how many preferred black cars over a total number of people. But since they had threw that word in there, given, given that they are female, we're going to look at the females in the table. All right, our next topic is a fundamental counting principle. This is a technique in determining the total number of outcomes. If you have n ways to do something and m ways to do something else, then you have n times m ways to perform both of them. So for example, on the first day of school, students have a choice of three book bags and five types of notebooks. So in how many ways can a student choose one book bag and one notebook? So if they have three ways to choose the book bag and five ways to choose the notebook, you're going to have three times five or 15 ways, 15 ways to choose one book bag and one notebook. So you simply take the number of items in each category and multiply them together. And this works for, you know, if you have even more than two groups. If you had five different categories, you would still multiply the number of items in each category by each other. Now I want to talk about a permutation. So a permutation is the number of possible ways of doing something. And with permutation, order matters. So the permutation formula you see here is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So n is the total number of objects you get to choose from, and r is how many you need to choose at a time. So for example, in a race of seven runners, how many ways can first, second, and third place occur? All right, so we got seven people to choose from, and we can order them first, second, and third. Now the same three people that were first, second, and third, I can switch those around, and that would give me a different permutation. So the order matters. I have the same three people but then put them in first and maybe change it and put them in second and change it again. Put that same person in third. Those same three people can switch between first, second, and third and come up with a new permutation. So to solve this, we're going to have 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 3 factorial. And that reduces down to 7 factorial. And 7 minus 3 is 4, so 4 factorial on the bottom. And if you were doing this by hand, you can change it to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial. So the 4 factorials will cancel out, giving you 7 times 6 times 5, which will give you the 210. Now you can use the calculator to also to solve this. So on a CLEP exam, they give you an online calculator, which is similar to the TI-30XS multi-view that you see here. Now there's a button, PRB, right here, second column, second row, PRB. If you press that, you get this menu shown below here. So option one is permutation, NPR. Option two, NCR, is for combination and three is for factorial. So on the calculator, you would first type in the seven, go to PRB, choose option one for NPR, and then type in three, and then press enter. Okay, so type seven first, go to PRB, choose option one, go back to the main screen, type in a 3 and press enter and I'll give you the 210. So for a combination, it's similar to a permutation. You're also finding the number of possible ways of doing something, but order does not matter. And the combination formula is n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. 
So for our example, we have, there are 10 people waiting to get in on the next pickup basketball game. How many different teams of five are possible? Now with a pickup game, your team of five, you're really not taking positions. You're not choosing a center and a guard. You're just getting five people together to play a game. So here, order does that matter. So you're just grouping, so you just have groups of five. So we're gonna use a combination. So that's gonna end up being 10 factorial divided by five factorial times 10 minus five factorial. And that's just gonna reduce down to 10 factorial over five factorial times five factorial, because 10 minus five is five. If you work that out, you get 252. And you can use the combination function on the calculator where you just put in the 10 first, go to PRB, choose option two for NCR, go back to the main screen, type in five, and then press enter. That should give you 252. So remember what permutation order does matter and combination order does not matter. And these are counting the number of possible ways of doing something.